Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video we dive into the world of Inside to try and unlock the meaning behind its abstract and ambiguous story. For those who don't know, Inside is a side-scrolling game from developer Playdead, who previously made the critically acclaimed Limbo, a game with a similar tone and style that also left many players scratching their heads as the credits rolled. It challenges players with a combination of platforming and puzzle solving, all to the backdrop of a depressing dystopia where mankind has seemingly enslaved the lower classes for radical human experimentation. Or at least that's one theory. This is, as previously mentioned, a game that leaves its story up to the interpretation of the player. Inside's story begins with a young boy emerging from his hiding spot within a bush as he makes his way through a forest full of masked watchmen who seem to be rounding people up and taking them away in trucks. As the boy sneaks deeper into the woodland, he is chased by these watchmen and their dogs. It's clear they have no regard for his well-being and are looking to prevent him from escape at any cost. As the boy makes his way out of the forest and across nearby farmland, he encounters many strange sights, such as this pig which seems to have been implanted with a worm-like creature, sending it into a violent frenzy. It seems the ominous government researchers have ravaged this land and committed vile atrocities not only to its people, but also their livestock. The boy soon happens upon a helmet-like device, and once he links up to this, he is able to control other people in the vicinity. These people seem docile and unable to move or function for themselves anymore, only doing so when control over their bodies is activated. This can be seen in detail when the boy reaches the chilling remnants of an abandoned town, now used as a security checkpoint run by this sinister organisation. It seems this town is where these mind control victims are processed and readied for experimentation at a later date. From here on, things grow increasingly weird and at times downright terrifying and grotesque. We manage to board an underwater pod, which the boy uses to access a beach inside enemy territory and gain access to the organization's private lab, where these human experimentations take place. Along the way, he encounters the most unnerving of these human experiments, the Siren, a young girl who is able to breathe underwater and attempts to latch onto anything living that falls below its surface. Roughly halfway through the game, the boy falls prey to one of these Siren-like creatures and is drowned in a shocking twist of events. However, the Siren implants his body with a glowing device, which seems to resurrect him and allow this hapless child to breathe underwater and also control the other human experiments without the need for one of those terribly unfashionable helmets. After navigating through the flooded wings of the laboratory, the boy discovers further signs of human experimentation, this time in zero-gravity underwater chambers. Eventually, with some help from his fellow captives, he reaches a large group of researchers and scientists gathered around an aquarium. After finding a way inside this enclosure, we are met with a disturbing sight, a mass of human body parts known as the Huddle. After freeing this human blob from its mind control devices, the boy is swallowed up by the now sentient being, which proceeds to break free of its underwater prison and smash its way through the lab like a human wrecking ball. Yeah. 
A ton of destruction and several squished scientists later, the Huddle manages to escape a facility, where after it careens down a mountainside and then lands next to the ocean on a beach as the sun sets or perhaps rises, which could in itself signify the new life this creature has gained from its escape, or its death after being unplugged from the machine and enduring such a colossal fall. This part isn't so important. The real question is, what the heck just happened, and what does it all mean? Inside has confounded players for years, but there are a few theories which do explain events to some degree, so with the story now covered, let's take a look at its meaning. As previously mentioned, one of Inside's main focal points is mind control. By wearing that strange helmet, the boy was able to control humans conditioned to be susceptible to such control. In fact, creating humans that could be controlled remotely, removing their free choice and humanity, seems to be this creepy organisation's MO. With that in mind, it is logical to conclude that while on the surface it seems this boy is making his own choices and in control of his own destiny, he may himself have been controlled by an unseen force this entire time. After all, why is such a young boy sneaking into one of the most dangerous places on the planet? Especially after having seen what happens to those who end up there. And why would he then try to free the huddle? I mean, surely you'd do anything not to swim in the same space as something like that, right? Unless it was the huddle mind controlling the boy this entire time. After all, the plugs we removed from its body are very reminiscent of the one connected to us by the siren, a device that allowed the boy to control people at will. It therefore seems likely that the Huddle acts as a giant hive mind, connected up to all other human experiments out there, and able to control them at will. In this case, choosing a young boy to come and free it from its underwater prison, and allowing it to finally escape. However, there are a few contradictions to this particular theory. The first being that after escaping its enclosure, the scientists seem to aid and encourage the Huddle in its escape. Secondly, they don't seem to attack or even apprehend the boy when he begins making his way inside the aquarium. The boy faced many dangers and challenges to get here, and suddenly security is relaxed and no one seems bothered about stopping him anymore. That's kinda weird. Finally, a secret ending can be achieved if we locate all of the glowing orbs from around the game world and deactivate them. After doing this, when replaying the farmland chapter, a hidden trapdoor can be discovered in the cornfield. Accessing this area leads to an underground bunker with a lever, and if we move this lever in a specific order, it opens the sealed door beside it. If you want to find the secret for yourself, the order is on screen now. After a long stroll through a very narrow tunnel in complete darkness, we emerge in an eerie room with a computer set up at the back. This computer has many surveillance screens hooked up to it, as well as one of those mind control helmets. If we cut the power to this control station, then the following cutscene plays. As you can see, the boy slumps down in the same dormant state as those other human experiments, the ones we took control of ourselves throughout the game. So this paints a far darker ending altogether, suggesting the person controlling the boy was in fact simply a scientist working for the organisation all along. The scientist took control of the boy and put him through a series of challenges which would test him both mentally and physically. As he faced these challenges, the boy would become smarter, more aware, and more resilient to his surroundings, and all of this information was being fed directly back into the huddle. By the time the boy disconnected the huddle and it consumed him, it was a fully optimised creation, capable of utilising all knowledge and skills picked up by the boy on his journey. An experiment now ready for the final phase of its test, to escape a secure facility. 
The organization's experiment worked. They had created a fully sentient being, one that could be controlled without the need for a mind control device. One step closer to realizing their end goal, creating a society of people completely under the influence of a single all-powerful dictatorship. And really, that's the social commentary this mysterious game seems to be making all along. An unsettling look at how the few in positions of power like to control the lives of the many without it. Something I'm sure most of us can relate to. And that's it for today's video, please remember to give it a like if you did enjoy watching, and maybe drop a comment too, as well as subscribing to the channel, and turning on notifications so you never miss an upload. This channel specialises in variety horror content, including creepypasta readings, horror gaming facts and theories, and general interest pop culture horror videos. So, if you are interested in all things spooky, you'll find something to enjoy here at Super Horror Bro. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.